It is September 12th, 2013. This is Pocket Gamer to show you some new iOS games that came out this week, what we thought of them, what they look like, what it's like to play them, if you should buy them, etc, etc. Let's have a look. Developer Orange Pixel is well known for making retro style platformers like Gunslugs and Meganoid, but now it's trying something a little bit different. Enter Heroes of Loot, a frantic and fast paced dungeon crawler. Actually scrap that, let's call it a dungeon runner or something, there's nothing about crawling in this game, that's for sure. It has endless dungeons, randomly generated quests shops, gold, and a chaotic combat system that's more like a shoot 'em up than any dungeon crawler. It's a lot of fun and the game puts up no barriers between you and loads of crypts to loot. Dead Effect is a violent, corridor-crawling, zombie-filled first-person shooter. You're on a space station where the entire crew has been turned into flesh-eating undead meat bags, and luckily you remember to pack your shotgun. The controls are as you'd expect. You're trying to control a fast-paced action game by touching a slab of glass, and the graphics are pretty good until you shoot a zombie and the bright red blood explosion looks like a tomato sauce. Dead Effect is a bit bland. It's very, very dumb. The writing is terrible but it's a perfectly playable first-person shooter if you're still trying to play those on your telephone. Joust Legend is a belter. It is this thoroughly engaging little mini-game about poking your opponent with a jolly great stick, and it's all about risk versus reward, patience, reflexes, and wrangling with a pair of power bars. It's also presented with crazy detailed graphics, it's running on Rebellion's console engine, and all the animations were motion captured from real jousters and real horses. You get to uh, customize your gear as well, and there's, it's filled with extra modes and stuff to do. It's a bit of an oddball title, I'll admit, but this is definitely one to check out. It's a lot of fun. This is Strata, a beautiful and elegant little puzzler uh, with a very unique idea. The plan is to lay strips of ribbon over a grid of coloured squares so that the topmost ribbon is the same colour as the square below. So that means weaving these strips of ribbon in and out of each other like stitching, getting a bit confused, trying again and then having that aha moment when you figure it all out. It also has this really graceful string soundtrack which reacts to how you play. If you keep getting things right, the game will belt out a pleasing melody, but if you get something wrong, you're punished with this discordant, flubbed note. If Squid Up was rubbish, I, I could say abyssal games? More like abysmal games, and then everyone would laugh and I would win a great big prize for journalism. Sadly, Squid Up isn't rubbish, but it's just sort of merely deeply underwhelming. You are a squid, and you bounce from wall to wall to giant rotating wheel in an infinite climb up a giant corridor. You'll collect coins, which you can spend on upgrades. You will bat away an advert for Candy Crush Saga. You'll probably never play this damn game again. The first Infectinator game was something different. No, not the zombie part, that's about as stale as George A. Romero's career. I'm talking about the rather unique pixel art strategy gameplay, which we called a worthy distraction in our review. Hot Chase, the uh, sequel, however, is something a lot more familiar. It's Jetpack Joyride, basically. Your zombie hero runs through the street and you hold the screen to make him climb up the screen then you eat people and dodge obstacles. It's kind of fun in a sort of brainless kind of way, but the very thought of slowly inching my way along and yet another IAP strewn upgrade path makes me wish for a real zombie apocalypse to just come in and end it all right now. <laughs> 
Where's My Water is quite possibly the best puzzle game on the App Store. That might be a controversial choice with, uh, you know, Angry Birds and Cut the Rope and all that, but I stand by it. I think it's got a really clever idea, it's got loads of character and just stacks of content. It's constantly getting updated, it's a real treat. Which is why it's so heartbreaking to see Where's My Water 2 surface as a typical free-to-play sequel. It's got power-ups, absurdly expensive in-app purchases, gates to stop you playing too much, and an energy system in tow. The gameplay is just as good as the last time, of course. You dig through dirt to send water to a bathing croc named Swampy. And the sequel has a few neat twists on the formula like challenges and these duck rush levels. But the really heavy-handed monetization just makes me sad. So very sad.